Hi there and a big welcome to our Macquarie Life family and also a big welcome to you if you are visiting us today. We hope that you will be encouraged and strengthened in your faith through our service. Feel free to join our chat and let us know where you're tuning in from. Let's start our service with prayer. Heavenly Father, we declare that this is the day that you have made and we decide to rejoice and be glad in it. I pray that each person present will feel your strengthening in their hearts, Lord, and your peace that passes all understanding. We also pray for our world, that it will find peace, Lord. We pray for those who are in positions where they can have influence, Lord God, that you will give them strategies for peace. And we declare that in Jesus' name. Amen. Jack, who is on our fivefold leadership team, will be continuing our series in Ephesians. So get your Bible out, prepare your hearts for the message. But firstly, let's have some worship. Church comes alive. The start walking, the dead start living. This is what it looks like when the church comes alive. The starts growing, the blind start seeing. This is what it looks like when the church comes and alive. The start walking, the dead start living. This is what it looks like when the church comes alive. The growing, the blind start seeing. This is what it looks like when the church comes alive. The start walking, the dead start living.
you, church. You can grab your seats. Welcome to the onliners, and welcome to our 8 a.m. service this morning. And thank you, team. What a great way to start church and start the week. Yes, let's give them some appreciation. <laughs> so we're continuing on this morning with Ephesians, and uh, Fraser did an excellent job last week of introducing us to the book of Ephesians, and Donna did a great job as well last Sunday night. And today I want to talk to you about chapter 5, but I'm going to use a few other chapter and verses as well to bring context. Who knows context is important? Yes, and we don't want to just say stuff and just fly off the handle and create chaos that can be averted. But we love Ephesians. We love the book of Ephesians. And Paul brings two worlds together. And it's really important that you remember this. When we read scriptures, uh, when we talk about Ephesians, he's talking about two groups of people. Those who are with Christ and those who are without. And when you read certain verses, don't get confused about the ones he's talking about. Because it can be quite daunting, all of a sudden being confronted with some, some really interesting verses, and you might be thinking, okay, where am I standing in all of this? And it's good to reflect in our hearts about where we are standing, but when in doubt, zoom out, and always see the big picture, it is about Jesus. Are you with t Team Jesus, or are you without Team Jesus? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And I'm talking to you about walking in love with a twist. Because sometimes we, uh, we get hung up with a few things and, and what happens in our lives. But I really want to talk to you about the heart of walking in love today. So if you're ready with me, let's jump in and, and keep reading. Ephesians 5 verse 1, we'll start. Therefore... Be imitators of God. Imitate God. Imitate what Jesus did. What would Jesus do? WWDJ. Or JD. Oh, there you go. You can tell I didn't partake in that one when I was younger. As dearly loved children. Loved children. And walk in love. Walk is a verb. There's action. There's something we're going to do about this. As Christ also loved us and gave himself for us, a sacrificial and fragrant offering to God. Gave, another verb, but it, it's going to cost us, isn't it? Giving. Walking and giving. Is walking in love going to be a walk in the park? Definitely not. It's going to cost us. It's going to require effort. But with it comes a beautiful fragrance. What comes out of that? Like a press, like an oil press or juice press where the pressure is applied. Out of it comes amazing things for our enrichment and nourishment and for others that we live with. Let's read on. Verse 3. Paul's going to give examples of how not to walk in love now. But sexual immorality and any impurity, any impurity, wow, that's a high benchmark, or greed should not even be heard of amongst you, as is proper for the saints. Obscene and foolish talking or crude joking are not suitable, but rather give thanks, the antidote. For know and recognize this, every sexual, immoral, or impure, or greedy person who is an idolater does not have an inheritance in the kingdom of God. Wow, what a way to start church. He went there so quickly. Context. As I said before, now why would someone just quote this scripture and put that on social media and just leave it there? Because we need context. It's like taking a knife to a gunfight if you don't have context. What's the key word there for me is, who is an idolater? 
anything falls under that, even the Ten Commandments, the Second Commandment, here's the question, who is your God? Are you with Team Jesus or are you not? So obviously the Ephesians phrase had that map up last week. You saw all the places that they had there in Ephesus. Obviously, they were Christians, but they weren't taught how to live in a Christian way yet. They weren't renewing their minds. So he had to go hard and tell them, these actions and these actions are worlds apart, and live as if you are Christians. So the question again I've got for you is, when we are born again, are we with Jesus or without Jesus? Let's keep reading on, and I'll, I'll unpack this as we go this morning. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Once darkness. You were once there, but now as a Christian you are walk as children of light. For the fruit, what's the evidence of being children of light? Consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth, testing what is pleasing to the Lord. So what is the fruit of walking in love? Goodness, righteousness, and truth. And that means we can be in the light, we can be in Team Jesus and still do silly things. And later on, I'm going to unpack that again, the, the wrestle that we've got in our lives with that. And I want to give a bit more context. Ephesians 2 verse 2 to give the filter even more um, fine-tuning of what we're looking at. Let's read together Ephesians 2 verse 2. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, and the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of, all of us also lived among them at one time. All you had to do was be born to be part of that clan, gratifying the cravings of our flesh. Even a young child, you can see the inherent nature of craving the flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath, but because of His great love. But you know there's going to be something contrasting coming up. But because of His great love, for us, God, who is rich in mercy, that Amy spoke about this morning and that we sang about, made us alive in Christ even when we were dead. Jesus made us alive even when we were dead. And so it's by grace we are saved. When in doubt, zoom out. One more verse before we start unpacking this. Ephesians 5 verse 6. Let no one deceive you with empty arguments for God's wrath is coming on the disobedient because of these things. So I want to ask you this morning, are you with Team Jesus or are you without Jesus? God's wrath is reserved for anyone who just hasn't accepted Jesus. Jesus took on God's wrath on the cross for our sake even when we didn't deserve it at all. Did we do anything to deserve God's grace? Yes or no? Did we do anything? He gave it to us. He made a way. And what Fraser mentioned last week, the tension in the rope, the pulling, all that's required of us is our job of faith, walking in faith, holding on to the promises that Jesus has made available to us and walking in love is growing up as babes and so we need to establish this foundation we are saved by grace and God gives us his righteousness not because of anything we have done in our own works and when we are born again what I'll show you later on the Holy Spirit seals our spirit to the day of redemption because we live in this the sinful world, and he can't have any communion and union with sin, and so he vacuum packs himself. For him to live in us, he can't just be in amongst all the craziness of this world, and so he seals himself, preserves himself, that he can't be tainted in us, 
and through our mind, He can work out the things of the Spirit. So let me say it another way. The sin of a Christian is none of the devil's business. The sin of a Christian is God's business, and God's taking care of His business on the cross, and that's all we need to do is bring our business under the umbrella of the cross that He made available for us. And we're forgiven for past, present, and future sin. Otherwise, we'll have to, what, get born again, again, and again. Every time you feel you've missed it, come to the altar again, born again, again. Jesus said, only once born again. For all time, for all sin. He died once. He's not going to die again. His sin or his death on the cross paid it all. He didn't do half a job. He did it for past, present, and future which is amazing. And so some people ask, you know, once saved, always saved. For me, that's a moot point. I don't want to go and test it out. (laughs) Why do you want to go and live so far from Jesus once you've received him to go and see if you might lose your salvation? I don't want to be the one to go and test it out because I was there. I remember making a decision as a 19 or 20 year old person, I remember that day we were sitting with a group of friends at a safari lodge in South Africa. And we were sitting there talking about life and deep stuff as you do around a campfire. And I remember telling them, saying, I'm going to go in the world and I'm going to experience the world. I made a decision. I want to go and see what it's like. As a pastor's kid, I thought it was all these good things I was missing out on. And I went there. And for the next five, six years, I reaped what I wanted. I experienced the world, and I experienced the pain and the loneliness and the doubt that got me back to my knees at the age of 25. And God was looking for me as his lost sheep. I knew he was pursuing me. And back in the days before WhatsApp and all these things and Skype, and I remember writing my mum letters whilst partying it up like the prodigal son. And I wrote my mum letters saying, I don't know what's going on in my life, but God's chasing me. I couldn't even enjoy my sin because God was after me. And so are you saying, Jacques, that I can live the way I want? Are you you saying that I can just do whatever I want? Well, you can try. But what I've experienced is what the Scripture says in Hebrews 10. I don't have a Scripture for that, by the way, so don't worry about trying to look for it on the slides. But it says in Hebrews 10, If we therefore sin willfully when we know to do differently... There is no more sacrifice for that sin, which means in this lifetime, you're going to reap what you sow if you want to go after the the things of the flesh. Galatians 6, 8, whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. And if you chose to ignore the principles of Jesus, you will feel the pain and the heartache and the doubt and the confusion and the carnage and the wreckage it brings to you and others in life. And all Jesus is doing is standing there saying, I want to help you come back so that we can cover all of these things. But when we try and do it on our own, he can't help us. And that's why when we sin, when we do something wrong, we run to Jesus When you do something wrong, you run to Jesus. You don't run from Jesus. The enemy wants you to run from him and go and hide like Adam and Eve. But when when, when you miss it, repent quickly. If If you want it to be well with you, do two things in life. Be quick to forgive and quick to repent. And you will not give the devil a stronghold or a foothold in your life for that open opening to grow into a future mess. You just nip it in the bud right there and then when we miss it. 
And Jesus said, you, we have an advocate with the Father. And he intercedes for us. And we know when we miss it, we can go and confess of us, our sins and what? He is faithful and just to what? Forgive us. Whatever it is, there is always hope with Jesus. I heard a preacher once say, you know, it's like people smoking. It's not that they, when they're Christian, it's not that they might be going to hell. They might just be going to heaven quickly or quicker. God wants to give us a full life, the Zoe life, but when we live in the flesh and the desires of the flesh, we just cut short His blessings and His promises in our life. And I just want to quickly want to touch on when people fall, when people fail, when things happen in life. We need to treat it with such grace, restoring them, if we know them, to restore them in humility and dignity. It's not a place to gossip. It's not a place to judge, because we're bad judge, judges, aren't we? You know, especially celebrity culture amongst Christians, when people fail and fall, it shakes other people's beliefs and their relationship with God. Because of the celebrity culture, you, you idolize someone, your life group leader or people on stage or whoever it is, because we want, we attracted to people in, in relationship. And the world makes idols of everyone. And I remember when Hansi Cronier, the South African cricket captain, fell and was charged with corruption. You know, some people made a joke about it because he said he was a Christian. And he said he gave in to temptation. And some people made the joke about the devil made me do it. And you, for a few years after that, the devil made me do it. Well, there's some truth in that. And every person is a few bad decisions away from total chaos in their life. And when there's divorce, when there's adultery, when there's just um, bad habits, secret cravings, alcoholism, gambling, domestic violence, all these things, it's not something for us to lay judgment on people, but to restore in grace and humility. Because like Paul said, I'm the worst sinner of all. If you, some, some of you might like what I've got to say this morning, maybe just because you don't know what goes on in my life. <laughs> maybe if you did, you'd, you'd think differently about me as well, because you don't know what I'm struggling with. You don't know what I go through. We all have our struggles. We all have our issues that we're grappling with in life. But that's why we come to church as a family, because we're all under the umbrella of grace in Jesus Christ, and therefore there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. And like Paul said, even the guy who killed Jews and Christians in the end said, in Christ I've harmed no one. Wow. That is the power of Jesus Christ and his forgiveness in your life. No matter what you've done, no matter where you've gone to, to the ends of the earth in your sin or your mind, there's always hope with Jesus and there's always restoration in Jesus Christ. So I want to pull a few things together this morning with a few slides just to show the tension in our lives. So Jill, if you put that first one up, please, about we are three components in life. We actually are spiritual beings. And the secular world do not recognize this. They just focus on the other two. And because of that, there's a foundational building block missing when we talk about certain things in life. We are spiritual beings and we all are looking for a God. Even if you don't believe in God, you will have a God. Being it your work or your relationships or something or your sport, you will find something to idolize because we are spiritual beings created in a spiritual way to connect with a God. We possess a soul, and we live in a physical body. Next slide, please, Jill. And as I said earlier, when we are born again, 
our spirit component is the bit that's born again. Our mind, our soul, and our body isn't born again yet. We still grapple with all these things in life that makes it hard. A fight every morning when we wake up. Our soul is our think, our feel, our doer. It's our cockpit in life where the controls are of where we're going to go. And every morning when you wake up, when you put your feet on the ground from the bed, you make a decision with your mind and your soul how today is going to go. And the body is literally just that environment. And the next slide, please, Jill. Two-thirds of our lives is unseen, like the iceberg. But we put so much emphasis on the outer, on our bodies. Got to have the latest. Got to do this. Got to look like this. Got to get some lipo. Got to get some Botox. <laughs> Got to look good. When we ignore the most important things in our lives, which is the spirit and the soulish side. Next slide, please, Jill. And this is why a lot of people struggle because we think holy living is in the body. And we struggle and strive to change. And we go to gym and we try and eat right and we do all these things and get up early in the morning and take the dog for a walk and go for a swim and go for a cycle or all these things. And somehow things aren't working out still. Well, let's read Ephesians 4. Let's get some more context. Ephesians 4, 17. Therefore, I say this and testify in the Lord, you should no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thoughts. They are darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them and because of the hardness of their heart. So, if unholy, ungodly living happens and is rooted in our minds, as it says in Scripture, where does holy and living and walking in love originate from? In our bodies or in our minds? In our minds, in our soul. And so walking in love and walking in the Spirit and living holy lives happens in our mind. Next slide, please. I'm not going to read that scripture just for time's sake. Uh, Jill, maybe the next line. And so walking in love happens in our minds. And before anything is seen in the physical realm, our soul, where we make decisions, how we process things, happens there. And that's why the Bible talks about renewing our minds. If you want to walk in love, if you want to, Live holy. If you want to do all these nice things, walk in the Spirit, it starts with our minds. And there's evidence that will flow into our bodies. Just like you can't see the wind blowing outside, you can see the effects of the wind with the trees swaying and the leaves blowing. That's the effect of the wind. That's not the actual wind. Just like that, Holy living is in our minds, and our souls, and that's why renewing the mind is very important. And the next slide, last one, with all these beautiful diagrams that, uh, or infographics that people always love. Thank you, team. Yes, you can come up. Every day as a Christian, we choose if we're going to go after the things of the Spirit or after the things of the flesh. And what makes it hard is if we don't renew our mind with the things of God and reading the Bible and praying and following the Holy Spirit, it makes it very hard for you just to try and change this when you're not focusing on that. Have a hunger to renew your mind. Focus on your mind and your soul and your body will follow suit. And the problem is not our potty mouths or our addictions or the cravings or the body, overweight body. It starts in our mind. And the power of God is strong to be able to transform our lives through that. And the rest will follow. Yes, as I started with, there's still a battle 
It's, it's sacrificial, but it's possible. And that's why I don't want to condemn anyone this morning. I didn't want to focus on all the examples of the outer of the body. But what, what, what I want to close on this morning is the soul. Our mind, our will, emotions. And there's a, a few groups of people that I want to talk to as we close this morning. And the first group of people regarding your mind and your walk with God is you've never actually made a decision in your mind to follow God. Your mind is the way it is because you are without Jesus, without the Holy Spirit, without constraint. And no matter how hard you try with all your five steps to positive mental attitude, life still seems to not work out because true transformation happens through Jesus Christ. And I want to give you an opportunity this morning to receive that grace, that forgiveness that Jesus brings. His righteousness, for you to know that you know that you know that you're right with God, that you're going to heaven one day. I want to give you an opportunity this morning to say, yes, I'm making my peace with Jesus this morning. And before I talk to the other groups, I'm going to give an opportunity. If there's anyone this morning, you've never made a decision to follow Jesus, to give your heart and your soul and your mind over to Him. Raise your hand right now. Just say, I'm doing that this morning. I'm following Jesus. I'm making a decision. I want to know that I'm right with God. Is there anyone here this morning? I see those hands at the back. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you. And we're going to sing a song later on, and I want you, as we sing that song, to receive the fullness of the kingdom and His forgiveness over your minds that there's no condemnation, that you feel secure and loved and know that He's got you and He sees grace wrapping His arms around you. And the next group of people I want to talk to you, there are different shades that I want to cover this morning. There might be a group of people here that in terms of renewing your mind, you were once there, you loved renewing your mind. You were going strong with Jesus. You were going great. But somehow down the line, you went cold. Maybe just in one area, but that area has become a massive issue in your life. Or maybe you've gone completely cold and you realize, I need to come back to Jesus today and renew my mind, make a decision to come back to Jesus today. For some reason, you don't know what happened. You just maybe got disillusioned with life, whatever it is. And you know your mind's gone cold to God and therefore you are fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Just come back and receive His forgiveness this morning. Come back, make a decision. There is no condemnation. All you need to do is say, I'm coming back. And because we are church this morning and we're talking about there is a special grace this morning for you to reignite and for the Holy Spirit to help you starting that journey back. So during the song again, make that decision saying, God, I'm coming back. I'm not going to stay cold for you. The next group is... I'm sorry I'm taking my time with this because it's important. We don't talk about these things often, so I want to take my time. There might be a group of people here today, you're a Christian, but for some things in renewing your mind, you've just said, it doesn't actually pertain to me. You've just rejected some of the truth in the Bible. And this group of people is very hard to talk to because you become self-righteous. You become justified in the things you do. Because maybe, you know, for me, we, we've got this honeymoon period when we become a Christian. For me, it's like two to three years in my life where there's a real sense of transformation that can occur. We give God full reign to change things in our life. But after a while, we, we get cold. And those things that the Holy Spirit once told us to work on, 
And it could, can be subtle, you know. We're not talking about big sin. It can be subtle things, lying, exaggerating, gossiping, whatever that is. Over the years, it becomes normalized. And we shortchange God's power because those things we've stopped working on. We've stopped renewing our minds in those things, and they become a stronghold. And it becomes really hard because you're like, why is life so hard? Because you've stopped renewing your mind in that area and giving God access to change your life. And that group of people I want to pray for this morning. For you to make a decision and say, no, I'm submitting my stubborn will to the things of God. And I'm not going to do it in my own way anymore. I want to be changed. And again, there's a grace for you this morning to receive that. Because Jesus said, if you continue in my way, we love that scripture about the truth will set you free. The full verse says, if you continue in my way, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So anyone here this morning who is not continuing in the ways of Christ, make a decision and repent this morning. Come back to God and turn around and say, I'm coming back. I want to continue in your ways, all of your ways, not just some of your ways. So the team's going to sing this morning, Amazing Grace. And as we sing, use this moment. Redeem the time, because these moments don't come often in church, where you have an opportunity to look the things in your life in the eye. We can just call it sin this morning, to be plain. Look them in the eye and say, I'm coming back to Jesus. And He will never reject you. For those watching online, He will never reject you reject you when you come back to him receive it this morning receive his grace and his freedom and his liberty that he wants to shower on you this morning thank you team thank you Jacques for the message today I pray we've all received something from God <laughs> around our giving I believe the word that sums up what the New Testament teaches on this is generosity <laughs> Jesus said in Luke 6, 38, Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For the measure that you use, it will be measured to you. Tomorrow night, Monday the 4th of March, 7pm in our church cafe, we are starting our Thrive course. This is a four-week course that helps you connect to the life of our church and is a wonderful opportunity for you to meet new friends and discover where you fit at Macquarie. Easter is almost here and for us as Christians, this is one of the most significant dates in our calendar when we celebrate Jesus' life, death and resurrection. Our theme for Easter this year is coming together at the table. It is also a time that many people who don't normally come to church are open to an invitation. So let's pray about who we can invite. We are having two services on Good Friday at 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. with childminding available in the 5 p.m. And our Easter Sunday services this year will be 8 and 10 a.m. only. On Easter Monday, the 1st of April at 2 p.m., Macquarie families are all invited to the Hoffmans for a fun afternoon. BYO everything and don't forget to bring some Easter eggs for an Easter egg hunt for the kids. You can RSVP to Ben or Mel Hoffman. Well, that's our service for this week. Next week, Pastor Adam Scharf will be continuing our series from Ephesians chapter 3. Thanks for joining in. Stay safe and we'll see you next week.